Hey guys, Moidog here, and today we've got an exciting announcement from the developers of Foxhole. Anvil Empires will be the next large-scale 24-7 persistent war MMO, and it's set in medieval times. Siege Camp just released this trailer, and throughout it you see what looks like small villages and bands of soldiers marching around, and I'm not gonna lie, it looks a little bit like an RTS at this point. That is, until they turn on the names and you see that every single person in-game is a real player. Meaning that thousands of people will have to come together to build fortifications, defend their lands, and especially organize themselves into larger organized military units. As someone that has put over 2,500 hours into Foxhole, I know I'm not the only one who thought, what if we had this, but instead of tanks and bunkers, we instead had knights and catapults and castles. In addition to this extremely hype trailer, a brand new development blog was also released, and here we can find a lot more information on what we should actually expect from the game. Between the trailer, the dev blog, and some digging on both the new subreddit and the official discord, I'll be going over everything we know now about Anvil Empires. First off, Anvil intends to have wars that last quote unquote weeks at a time, and based on dev chats regarding how the recent Foxhole Wars have gone, it appears that the sweet spot for wars is anywhere between 3 to 5 weeks or 21 to 35 days. Speaking from experience, any longer than that and the wars kind of lose their magic. Any shorter and it really felt like you just couldn't get invested or it was more of a stomp on either side. Just like Foxhole, the draw for Anvil is that you're just a small, insignificant cog in this giant war machine. So whether you're maintaining villages, organizing logistics, or fighting in the front, the devs make it clear that the conflict itself is fully driven by player actions. There are no safe zones and no artificial barriers to PvP. However, where Anvil seems to differ from Foxhole is the emphasis on the Empire building. From the blog, it appears that very few or potentially no towns or settlements may be present in most of the world known as Caligo. As we can see on the map, Caligo is more or less broken up into two distinct islands, North and South, which should indicate that there will be a naval aspect to the game as well. In the description of Caligo, the devs write, This isolated continent holds an array of deadly creatures and bountiful features. From craggy highlands to swaths of verdant fields, North Austria's dense forests unfurl into the murky mires of Lissinger. The northern mountains of Ettenwell are frigid and unforgiving, while the southern islands are home to barren land and fertile soil alike. Dark secrets lie hidden inside Caligo's primeval mountains, beneath its abyssal seas, and between grains of the very soil itself. Tread carefully, for this land may not be so easy to conquer. First off, I absolutely love the lore behind this, and from this small description we can actually assume a lot of the following. Weather will be implemented, and certain areas like the mountains will be really cold. Additionally, farming will be required, as some soil is barren while others on the map are extremely fertile. Hunting or even defending yourself from creatures will occur, so all the combat in game won't just be against other players, but the environment as well. This is awesome, since as much fun as I've had in Foxhole, it's more of a modern era game, meaning you're not necessarily fighting against the world as much as you would in medieval times. The fact that you could potentially have to claim territory and then pick up your entire settlement to move to more fertile lands is actually extremely intriguing, and most likely the first actual conflicts in this game will be all about those initial land grabs in order to just sustain your settlement. Settlements are all completely player made, and although we can see what looks like castles on the map itself of Caligo, these are what players can actually build. These settlements will most likely require resource gathering for your basic materials. From the video, we can see players carrying massive logs, stones, and potentially even hay bales. If it's anything like Foxhole, certain material can only be gathered with certain technology. And in this time lapse, we see the small village grow into one with walls, farmland, and even roads, to a decently sized stone walled fort with defensive positions. And although you initially see players manually carrying items, soon we see horse drawn carriages, and maybe even a type of personal wheelbarrow. From the official Discord, things like markets can supposedly be built for trading and commerce, and animal farming currently includes horses and chickens, but donkeys, mules, and other animals are currently in the works. They also mention examples of crops, including wheat and produce. Now we don't know anything else regarding what you can actually make in these settlements, but on the game's new subreddit, players are already discussing things like bread and fish suggesting you could potentially fish to sustain yourself if you live in a place where farming really isn't that viable. Now when it comes to combat, the devs really haven't confirmed much in the blog, but from the video we can see swords and shields, spears, axes, horsemen, bows, and even a siege weapon. 
There are also images of players burning down straw huts, and a group charging out of a forest with swords in one hand and torches in the other, which suggests that we'll be able to customize a lot of what we actually want to carry into battle. Additionally, despite not seeing any real combat in the trailer, the devs have clarified what combat should look like from a post on the official Discord. This post clarifies that you will have a quote-unquote combat mode, which restricts your movement since early tests would have players simply sprinting at people, hitting them, and then quickly sprinting away, making it not so much combat, but instead a repeated hit and run sprint fest. The devs state that sprinting will be used to help close distances in initial combat, but once you start fighting, it will actually be very hard to disengage. And to further encourage players grouping together and fighting like you would in medieval times, there's a shield wall mechanic which actually improves defenses of those who stand close together with their shields up. Because of this, aim and accuracy of the individual is far less important than that of the group's organization, and this will encourage strategic combat, rewarding those who have better logistics, better groups, and more organized formations. In saying this, everything can and most likely will be changed in some fashion, since the game is currently in a pre-alpha state, so don't expect everything to be fluid just yet. Either way, this initial design philosophy is awesome to hear, since the design decision to focus on groups and formations is much more in line with how battles of the past were fought. Obviously, skill of the individual is important, but you can't do anything unless you have a group behind and with you, and this will facilitate players into creating alliances and working together much more than they might in in foxhole. Knowing all this, the big question still is how many people can actually fight in a battle? Well, whereas foxhole limits you to 100 players per side in one zone, Anvil is supposed to let you fight in a battle with a thousand players, with many thousands more supported throughout the persistent world. This is all managed through a completely custom server engine developed called R2, which was created from the ground up with the sole reason to support games like Anvil Empires. Years ago, the devs had the Battle of Red River technical demo for R2, which was tested with a thousand players in one battle, and although it may look a little primitive due to it just being a test, we can see a scale of a battle that far exceeds anything in Foxhole, and it actually looks more in line with games like Total War, which is kind of mind-blowing since that is a large-scale RTS. From the technical test, we can also guess that maybe as the Anvil War progresses, technology could get as advanced as muskets and cannons, which would be absolutely amazing in-game, but once again, this is simply a guess. Now, despite this looking absolutely awesome, there has been no real announcement on who you can actually fight as from the official devs, but on this subreddit, we can see that there are three different factions. These are the Pagans, the Ancients, and the Remnant. The Pagans appear to be a sort of Viking faction, with their lore description emphasizing sailing. Ancients read to me a bit more like the older Germanic tribes, and the Remnant are from a fallen, ruined empire, most likely heavily influenced from Rome, suggesting they wish to reclaim what has been taken from them. The fact that we have three factions instead of two is already a huge divergence from Foxhole, which has Colonials and Wardens, meaning that you could potentially end up in situations where false alliances are made in order to take out the greater of two evils right now. I'm curious how the actual wars or ages, as they're technically called, can be won, since in Foxhole you have to capture a certain amount of victory point cities. I would assume things like territorial claims through settlement flags or something like that may be a way to establish who owns what in the world. I've included links to everything I've sourced in the description below, including this Reddit post, so if you want to read the descriptions further, feel free to please check them out. But I am extremely excited to see where this all goes. As I mentioned previously, Anvil Empires is in pre-alpha, and if you would like to take a part in the open testing, it will be available starting in April, despite the game itself having an unknown release date. With it having an official store page and wishlist option on Steam, I would guess that within the next year or so, we may be moving into a beta and officially purchasing an early access version of the game, which should be awesome. But what do you guys think? Excited about the R2 engine and battling with thousands of players at one time? Or maybe you're more interested in running a thriving settlement you built from the ground up? Let me know in the comments below, and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. But that's it for me. Until next time, peace.